We good. We back. We back. You already know it's your boy. It's the homie. Wise guy Q. The mouth of the south. And it's your boy MD Uno. Mr. Free Game. Coming with a bunch of free game. Free game? Yes, sir. You know. And we got a special, special guest in the building today. Special, special. Uh, my man Avery Johnson. A1, man. The man behind the man. The man behind the man. That's not who you the know. man standing next to the man. The man. The man behind the man. That's who we call it, the plug. The plug. You already know. Producer, engineer, uh, work with several uh, more. In the entertainment like uh, industry professionals, um, live musician, player. Um, hey man, hey one, why we got you in here? This is family, right? Yeah, here, this man. is family, man. Absolutely. Like he, he go back to when I was fourteen. I remember uh, meeting him at the church that uh, I was going to. That's where I met Q as well. And uh, you know, I, I remember. I always remember it stand out to me. One one day, the pastor, uh, Bishop Mary D, gave him a word, and 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 she was telling him how something big was about to happen, and uh, that that was before the bone crusher thing took place. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, something big definitely happened, man. Um, he he he's the producer behind the Never Scared instrumental. Has worked with artists like uh, India mm -hmm. Ari on her project Acoustic Soul. Uh, shared the stage with artists from Stevie Wonder to Whitney Houston. Uh, A1, man, for the people out there that don't know, tell us a little bit about you, your background, how you got started in music. I mean, I got started in music, man. You know, my my dad, he was a drummer. He okay. played with this uh, blues singer, Lattimore. You know, they used to rehearse at the house, so I've been around music my whole life, man. That's I just kind of came up through that. And, man, just... It, it seems so long ago now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, man, once you get bit by the bug, you know it when you're a little kid, you know. I've seen it in both of y'all, man. Once you get bit. Man, yeah. Man, you once get you get man. bit, it ain't nothing you can do when that bug man. gets you, man. Yeah, you like. And I started playing drums. Then I started playing guitar. Next thing I know, I'm playing guitar at the church. Then the next thing I know, I'm playing bass at the high school, little wow. jazz band. What instrument don't you play? <laughs> uh, I played a little bit of everything, but then I got into that. And then next thing I know, uh, I went to college, kept playing. Then I, I moved to Nashville after that and just started working, man. You know, just started Word. working and doing my thing, man. Playing a little live music, playing a little studio sessions, um, working with artists in there and you know that led well, what was your thing. first like uh mainstream uh or you know first gig in the music industry like what was your first uh, uh, uh opportunity like what what would you say was your first big opportunity that came along um probably i i started when i moved to nashville i started working with uh uh, this guy had a TV show, uh, Bobby Jones. Okay, yeah, that's the BET. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby show. Jones show. Yeah, I met a bunch of dudes uh, on that show. Then somebody told me BB and CC Winans had an audition. Word. One of the, the MDs used to come and watch the band that I was playing in. Okay. And so he talked to me. He's like, hey, man, you know, blase, blase, we might want, it. Might want you to do something. Then we went to an audition. And then next thing I know, he called me for that. And you went on tour with BB and CC. Went on tour with them. That lasted yeah. for like three years, huh? Yep, three years of doing that, meeting everybody. But you know, I had met a lot of people through that Bobby Jones show too. You know, yeah, I did a yeah. Lot of that, so okay. And, and uh, that was playing the bass guitar. Right? Playing the bass guitar. Yeah, you fuck it with that bass man. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> that right there bring the funk to to the song. Yeah, right? I tried to make it up. do what it do. You know what I mean? Yeah. What made you stick with the bass out of everything? Um, I just liked it, but you know what? I didn't. I didn't like the bass that much, but I was good at it. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Like mm -hmm. really, I liked the drums like that, but I could never get off the drums because we always needed a bass player. So right. When I was right. in, start a little band with my cousin, and you know, Avery still play know, the drum. Yeah, yeah, he still play a little bit. He's more production though now. Oh, okay. my son, yeah, he's more doing that, but. I don't know, man. It just, I could never get off of it. You know, every yeah. time I was like, man, I want to get back to the drums. Everybody's like, nah, man, I like how you play the play bass. Play that bass, man. So, 
Yeah, man, because it's production, man. Uh, I heard heard somebody in an interview say, I can't remember who it was, who was the interview. They were like, that Bone Crusher never scared. That's the, that, that's the song that changed the whole wave of music in the, in the game and, and, and gave the South that push when we took over the game and we never gave it back after that. That was you know a know huge record, man. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was, was your production top, right top, there. What, I think that was top 10 on the hip-hop and R&B charts. Especially the remix on that thing. Yeah. You know what? I don't even know what to say now. I mean, you know, I used to say that to Cats, man, but I would say, hey, man, you know, I think I think that one record you know, we made way back in the day, <laughs> I think that kind of opened up the door. But when I said it, everybody was like, no. Nah, I don't know if that record was, and, right? You know, now you got other people saying that. I'm like, oh, okay. So that was a listen. big record, <laughs> bro. Yeah. How did you meet Bone Crush? I met Bone. I was playing in this band called the Chronicles. Okay. So we used to work down there on Third and Spring. We played a little club called Yin Yang. Okay. So it was like a little small. We had sort of a band like the Roots type band. So everybody, you know, during that time, we was working with Goody Mob. Outcast. Word. Even Usher. Usher was a little kid then, but he oh, was yeah. coming in and sat in with us. And uh, Bone Crusher was a cook. He was the cook? He was a cook out there. Okay, okay. And so every once in a while, somebody had told us well, we had an open mic. Mm. And they was like, hey, man, the cook want to come up. And I said, well, you know, we always like, man, whatever, come on then. Right. And he got on the stage. He rocked the mic. Had a good time. We stayed in touch. Dope. You know, and as he got better, I just kept telling him, I said, man, we're going to have to do something sometime. And then he would say that to me. And uh, we was in a group, I think, called Lyrical Giants at that time. And uh, I don't know. I just kept telling him, I was like, man, I'm going to do something with you sometime. So we just talked about it and it eventually it happened. So how, how did the Never Scared uh the beat come along was he there was he a part of that process was he there when you uh, actually produced it or was it something that you just presented to him actually yeah I just presented it to him like we talked about it and uh, we talked about doing something we could never make it happen right you know the group was in between deals yeah. and all of that so um, some kind of way he ended up moving out there by me like where oh, I yeah. was staying that time yeah so, okay, so okay. we could just walk to each other's house you know we were right down the street right and he came over one day and he said hey man I'm I'm ready to do something you know yeah. for myself and I was like oh okay well we gotta do it straight up you know what I mean so really to be Man, I hate to even say this, but it probably took me about 15 minutes. <laughs> Straight <laughs> up, bro. Yeah, like 15 minutes. Like, like no that. Morning, yeah, though. yeah. Dang. I just, I just walked down there. I started messing around with something. Got straight to it. Got straight to it because we had did a session. Got paid. You remember that? Because uh, his, his partner was David Banner. Yeah. So we were working with uh, David Banner, and Banner had just brought in Little John. Yeah. And they had this record. It kind of... Remember that record Ball and G had? So I might get your car shot up. Yeah, get your dog kid. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we did that with David Banner out there. Okay. With Lil John. And I think Bone Crusher was like Lil John's bodyguard. Oh, yeah? Something like that. Okay, yeah. okay. And he was a artist, too. Uh. He was looking at doing something with Bone, but then he did something with, uh, I think, China White. Right. Before then. And, uh, so, you know, I kind of got his permission. I was like, John, you know, is a cool man. I'm thinking about doing something. He's like, yeah, man, go right, ahead, right. Man, do whatever. You know, because John cool like that. Man. Yeah, he, yeah. He good people. Okay. Yes, and so, next thing we know, man, I, I did something, like I said, 15 minutes. He went on the road with John. He came back. He said, man, let me hear it. Yeah. You know, so I played it for him. He was like. Mm -hmm. He said, man, you ain't did this. <laughs> I said, I did do it. He's like, no, nah, man, come on, man. You know you ain't did this. <laughs> I said, okay, I mean, if you don't want to use it, you ain't got to use it. He's like, no, nah, I ain't say that. Right. Said, that beat used to, we used to tear the club up when that beat came on. Yeah, yeah you know, like, it, I, yeah. I really didn't even know. That was one of them ones. Right yeah. yeah, yeah, I didn't know it was like that. You wanted, you wanted the main a, reason to this day that I love 808s in my beat so much. Like, yeah, I can't stand 908s. And I had the pleasure. Like, keep them yeah, away yeah. from me. 
It gotta be 808 in my beat and every beat, I don't care what kind of beat it is, I'm putting right. 808 in it. And I had a, I had the pleasure of uh, doing a record with A1, man. Um, what what year was that? That was probably like back yeah, in 08, yeah, I used to be so jealous. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't get an A1 beat I, I, from I, I, that. Oh, he was man. always. I was happy. You, I, you know, I, I was I was you know amped at the opportunity. It was after the yes. Never Scared record. I came on the track. I was like, win win Mookie on the A1 track. Bone Crusher, mm-hmm. Never Scared. You know the one who made that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Win win. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, I couldn't never get no A one beat, man. He used to always make me make the beats. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, <laughs> your own beats. I your know, own yeah. Your own beats. Your beats are hot already. You, do, you right. the main reason why I'm good at what I do right now to this day. You, you, you started me. You helped train me. You know what I mean? Showed me how to do what to, what to do. You know what I mean? What needs to be done. I appreciate so, it, man. But you know, know what? Mean? You always had that fire, man. You always had that that energy. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. can tell when you meet somebody. Yeah. You know, a lot of cats be saying they want to do it, right. but, you know, they ain't really got that. But I used to be jealous, drive. though, man. Like, like um, rest in peace, Nick, Nicodemus go straight. Nick, Nicodemus, Nicodemus go straight, all right. Like, that, that, that shade tree used to drop when he used to perform that thing, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. That shade tree and that, that, that major. I'm like, oh, oh man, I wish I had one of them beats, <laughs> man. Oh, man and I was trying to get that, that. That's what I was always aiming towards, get my beats to hit like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. I, I ain't know he inspired sure, you like that. Yeah, that's yeah, what's up. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. But um, you, you don't work with people like Silk and India Irie. I don't know. Tell us a little bit about your resume, man. You know, people don't know I you mean, the man you know, behind the man. I mean, really? You know, like I tell everybody, man, you you got to come up with people. Like, right. Everybody think now that it's, it's all about catching somebody when they own and they give you an opportunity. Right. But really, you ain't going to get no opportunity till you create pressure mm. on what they do. Mm. You know, so it's really more about just coming up with your people. Like I said, when I coming met up Bone, together. you know, Bone was a cook. When I met Indy Ari, Indy Ari with the, she worked at Chick-fil-A. You know what I'm saying? Word, like, that's word. Crazy. That's, that's, wow. that's how you come up, man. Yeah. And still, yeah. you know, I met Lil G when I was on, uh, but but people. but it's about it's people. about having the eye and the ear too. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, you got to have that. But in order to have that, it's like you got to kind of keep the noise away from you. You know what I mean? Right. Because you know everybody be looking at the billboards and they be looking at all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know all that's marketing. Like you pay money. Yeah. To do all of that. So just building genuine relationships you and have coming genuine up relationship with relationship and you gotta say, Okay, can can this person sing? Can this person rap? Can yeah. this person and I'm not talking about what your manager is not saying, I'm not talking about how many followers you got on Instagram. I'm Straight talking up. about if me and you go in this room and I just hear you, is it good or is it bad? Right. Mm-hmm. You know right. What I mean? Straight and up. And after that, we know what it is. And yeah. not saying yeah. that everything is about talent and it ain't about Followers, because that might be what you good at. Right. You might just be good at hey. getting followers and mm. having a good story. Say that, and, say that. That's you know, true. And I'm good with that, too. It's yeah. like whatever, but whatever it is, it need to be the truth. Like Straight It don't up. need to be a lie. Man, you know, talk you know, about it. It need to be, it. It need to be the truth. You trying to tell me what you're doing. I'm like, no, nah, I can see what you're doing. Like, if you do it. Yeah. You do it. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to yeah. tell me what you do. I see what you do. And if I can't see what you do. You know, everybody think that it's relationship, but it's not a, it's not the relationship that you think. It's not, oh, I'm going to do a favor for you. No, I didn't put so much pressure on you. You're going to do it because we did never scare, you know, Bone didn't even have no deal. Word. He didn't even have no record deal. Damn, damn. He didn't even, so, so he, how did, how did, uh, T.I. end up on the track? Who else was on that record? Was it just Tip? I don't remember. Uh, to be honest, I mean, had about eight different. No, I'm talking about the original. The original, Killer Mike, Killer Mike, Killer Mike, Killer Mike, Mike. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I think Bone, Bone knew Killer Mike. Okay. And, uh, Ti, Ti came in. We were basically trying to get past the Troy. Oh yeah. That's who, originally, when I had the idea for it. That's who. I won. Okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I didn't know I didn't know T.I. Right. And so Bone, Pastor Troy was so big though. After that record, 
we DSG. Ready, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, we ready. Big. So he was doing so much. We no couldn't really. Cleansing. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't get him because yeah. he was just in and out and moving. And then Bone told me, he said, man, we need to, you know, we need to get. And I said, who? He said, man, I bet we could get Tip. And, I, you know, at that time, I was like, who is Tip? <laughs> he was like, T.I. And I said, man, I don't know him. I ain't That's when he was just coming he up. He was just yeah. coming yeah. out. I think yeah. he had one record or something. Uh, you know, he was did, right, did okay. was right around when that, that I'm serious didn't do it like they thought it was going to do it. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. As a yeah. matter of fact, my yeah. man was over at uh, LaFace. Uh, <laughs> KP. KP. Yeah, KP. Yeah. Yeah. So KP had told me about him, but only because we went to traffic court. So it was just, That's so crazy. Just, so speed tickets or something, and he had told me about him just real briefly. And then when Bone said his name, for some reason it didn't trigger to me that it was the same guy. Mm. And so then Bone called him, and uh, he said, I'm, I'm going to be at the studio at 3.30 in the morning. Mm. And you know, and I, as many times as we already been waiting on Pastor Troy, I was like, man, he'll be able to show up, man. I ain't doing that. Right. You know what I mean? But hey, 3 30, ding dong. Showed up. He showed up. He came in. First thing he said to me was like, he said, man, if I don't like the beat, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> so already, you know, it? yeah, so already, tip me and him it. Tip tip yeah, so yeah. already, me and uh, he was like, I'm sound kinda, like some tips, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm kind of <laughs> looking at him like, little short dude, like, oh, okay, right. I'm looking at Bone like, this your man, but you know, already, <laughs> I ain't, I don't want to use it, you know, from the jump. And yeah. uh, we started, I, I hit, I hit play, he heard it, he said, let's go. He said, man, I think I got something for that right now. All right. I was like, all right, go on in this booth. We'll stop this booth. I hate yeah. one, nigga. That's it. I hit record, and I'm sitting there hating. You know, I'm already ticked off because of what he said. So I'm like, <laughs> man, man you know, I'm sitting back like, like, man, we ain't going to use this. <laughs> and he came in with that line. What is it? No. Nah, I'll take your cookies. Yeah. As soon as you said that, yeah. I'll yeah. take your cookies. I said, I looked over bone. I was like, okay. You might be gonna use it for real. You yeah, might be yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah, it, man. Went off with that. Yeah. We, we, we just had a. Uh, what, what you was gonna yeah, say? I'm serious. Was slept down though. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Was yeah, hard. Yeah, but yeah. that was a label. That was a label. Uh, yeah, they they yeah, dropped the ball yeah, with the label. Yeah, whatever, whatever you know they yeah, had going, yeah, on. going on. Yeah. yeah, because the project was it, it was ill. It was oh, crazy. Yeah. I love them, man. Yeah. Tunk, too, man. I love Tunk. Yeah, shout out Tunk. Tunk be going hard with the beats, yeah. too. Yeah. We just had a dark artist on, on, on here um, a few weeks back named Jigs. He had he had a few beats from Tunk on a oh, couple man. of projects, and them things were so hard. I was like, man. Tunk, yeah. Tunk yeah. still yeah. going hard, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, we just did an uh, interview with the artist called Just Call Me Vito, and he was telling us about... um. A situation that he 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 stumbled upon where his his business wasn't in order, oh, yeah. and um you know uh, ended up having to change his name behind some some crazy situation that he was telling us about. What what was the uh, on on the business front? What was the the talk about spreadsheets and all of that? I mean, you know, I came up like I said, I came from Nashville before I got over here, so. I had the advantage of knowing the business side of it. Mm, like I worked mm. with some, I worked with some older white dudes that had publishing companies and right. all of that. So they had told me, "Hey, this is how the split go. This is publishing. This is." I knew everything when I got here. That's what's up. That's but what's I, up. I think the thing that people don't understand is, even though you know it, you ain't gotta tell everybody you know it. Mm. You just gotta wait till it's time to sign the contract. Straight up. And then, you know, put in the work first. Make yeah. sure you got something good. We're never scared. Yeah, because that, that'll scare people off. Too. It'll scare like, people yeah. off. People yeah. don't wanna work. They don't want you coming in to, with the split sheet the right. first day right. talking about this. You know, they wanna talk about the music. Too. Absolutely. And get it going and make yeah. sure the relationship cool. Make sure, you know what I mean? You ain't gonna make nobody mad. And mm -hmm. You know, the vibe is good. So once everything is cool, I tell her just don't sign nothing. Don't don't do nothing. Right. Don't do nothing in the beginning. Don't do all of that. See yeah. what it's gonna do. Is, you know, we're never scared. I was fortunate because as it started to grow, 
it got so big yeah. that probably what people would normally do and the rights and all of that, what right. they would normally get. I think we, we went with Jermaine Dupree. Okay. Who shout out to Jermaine Dupree, man. He was shout out JD. Yeah, JD was so so deaf. JD was fair, and you know he was good. Like he didn't try to take nothing. He didn't try to do anything. Like Mm -hmm. everything was cool with it. And the thing I I learned from that situation is the bigger you let the record get, yeah. I mean, everybody know what it is. Like, Straight up. You ain't got to discuss it. Exactly. It's like, hey, oh, man, I know that record. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Once, once it gets to a certain point, if you wait and you blow it up yourself, like y'all got this podcast now. Right. Like, obviously, you know, when as it grows, it's y'all's. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so if they sleep on you, then that's on them. Right. right. But it's right. a different conversation when we get to the table because it's like, hey, it's already going now. You Straight know, what, what you exactly. could have got it from, what yeah. you could have signed Yesterday's to. price. Is yeah, not it's today's not today's price. <laughs> it's not today's price at all. So yeah, you know what yeah. it is. It's like, hey. Right. You know, so with that record, we were fortunate. It got to that point and it was the same thing. Like, they said, well, you know, what's the split going to be? I was like, split going to be what the split is. Like, right, right. We'd be all right. Straight up. Yeah, and that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. And to everybody's credit, everybody was cool with that. You know? That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. And I, The way I, that it was supposed to go. Yeah, I yeah. encourage every guy to just get your grind in, put your time in, and you know, I'm not telling you not to copyright your music. I'm not telling you not to protect it. Yeah, you have to protect it. You have to get all that stuff straight. Mm-hmm. But the split sheets and all of that, if you got a hit, I can tell you right now, anybody that's out there pushing somebody, they spending a lot of money right. to make it go. Mm-hmm. So if you already going, yeah. oh yeah, they'll jump off their thing and it's quick. Straight up. And go to the thing that's going. Because mm. everybody want to eat. And the only way you're going to eat is if that record is winning. Right. You know That's the only way anybody is going to eat. And nobody's going to stop something that's already winning. Straight you know, up. You be stupid. Yeah. So you don't do that. Yeah, man. Tell me about um, what was it like uh, gracing the stage with Whitney Houston, man? I mean, you know, man, when I met Whitney... I think she came while I was playing bass with BB and CC Wyman. She came out and she knew that. Much like, peace with me. Yeah, yeah all right, man. Pete Whitney. Her, Much yeah. love. Her, I loved her. I love, you know, Bobby too, man. Bobby's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Bobby. Yep. Yeah. And I think she came out to a show or something, but she was so big at the time, she couldn't go anywhere. It's like she couldn't even walk out in public. So. Yeah. She came up with us. I think she sang background or something. Okay. Like on stage. Okay. Background? Yeah, just so people wouldn't know who she was. Right. Like just so right. she could get out and <laughs> yeah, walk yeah, around. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And so we did the thing with her and I met her and she was the biggest star in the world at that time. But I do remember how down she was because she know, was cool, huh? Yeah, at the time when you you know, when you're a musician, man, with big artists like that. Yeah. You making some money, but at the end of the day, the musician is like the janitor on the tour. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the lowest, really. Uh, that's the lowest you can get. You wow, know, writers, wow. writers, they making money going out to the mailbox. And yeah. Making what you going to make riding <laughs> that bus. Just tell me that back, to, back in the day. I just like, walk, walk out to the mailbox. Yeah, they walk out to the mailbox and they go back to writing and producing. The mailbox and, money. And Straight they, up. Yeah, they got it like that. So I just remember she was very nice and down. Man, you know, like yeah. we got through with the gig. She That's was dope. like, "Yeah, you That's know, dope. where y'all going? What y'all doing?" What's wrong? So you know, good people, man. Yeah, I did hear she was a real down to earth person. Oh man, she was just, she was great. Yeah. And young work with like Gladys Knight and, and yeah, everybody, yeah, man. man. Yeah, that's Stevie crazy. Wonder. That's Stevie crazy, Wonder. Man. Yeah, that's crazy, Stevie, bro. Stevie, man. Stevie yeah. used to come out and sing with us, and he would come on stage. And uh, after you get to know him. Like Stevie is crazy, man. So, <laughs> what you uh, mean? Oh man, we played. I forget the name. Maybe it was Disney World or something. But we, some kind of way, we ended up going to the amusement park. Yeah. Cause you know when you start a tour, that's how they get you ready. They put you on a little amusement park, like Six Flags. Right. 
did do you know something that ain't too high yeah. high profile. So yeah. you just kind of get the show together. So Straight we used up. to do right. the shows out there. We went out to California, and Stevie came out to the show. Uh huh. Started hanging out. Then we went to the amusement park with him because you know them guys they're so rich they can rent out the amusement park. Right. And so got to know him a, just a little bit, and uh, he would come out. He would come up and sing, you know, like sing a song with us or something that we're doing. And so he came out one show, and I sort of started to know him a little bit. Right. Right. And you know, as people helped him on the stage, you know, he's walking. He came up to me, and he was like, "This Avery." <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, yeah, you know, and, and he said, yeah, man. He said, he said, man, he said, man, I like the shirt you got on. So, <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, man, I appreciate it, man. You know, I, I always want to see you. Yeah, yeah, he was like, I can't see, man. I don't know what you. <laughs> I said, man, this dude that got me, man. I was sitting there describing oh, it. I'm talking about all the colors. Right, and, right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That's yeah. dope, man. Yeah. That, 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 that's all right. Shout you get to see a little bit of Stevie. his Stevie. personality. Shouts out to the legend, man. Stevie yeah. Wonder, yeah. yeah too, what do you think about music these days? Like, how it is now? Is it, I mean... You rocking with it? I'm rocking with it. Like, it's just a different game. Right? Yeah. Every time, the game has always changed. Always. always. You know, and it's always... But it always come back around some kind of way, too. Everything come around, but... You know, I think what a lot of people miss is that it's just everything got its heyday. Everything has its heyday, mm -hmm. and then everything is going to evolve into something else, and you got to be a part of it mm -hmm. evolving. When we did Never Scared, we did that on Pro Tools. Right. This is 2002. Right. You know, we did India's first record. That was on Pro Tools. Okay. Man, when I called, you know, she called the label and she's like, I'm going to work with this guy. And he ain't got no tape machine. He ain't got no big old board. Yeah. Like, what? Just a computer. Just a yeah. computer? News, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They was like, no, nah, man, I don't, I don't know about that. Right. So, Kadar Massenberg, who was the head of Motown at that time, he came to my house. You know, to see it, which I already, that's a whole other story. But you Niggas know, just had a board just for show. Yeah, yeah, right, and all right, of that. Right. So we, don't you know, we, when you at the the <laughs> forefront of technology, people uh -huh. don't really know what it is yet. And right. the industry moves slow. So yeah. they're the last ones to really figure out what it is. This all is they do is just ask right. questions and know what's happening, what they've been doing. Yeah. So yeah. he came, he listened to it. I think we had just did um, Brown Skin. Okay. Yeah, we had just you know played that. Yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had yeah, just yeah. played that, and uh, he listened to it. Yeah. You know, and he, he listened to it. He saw his head moving. Okay. You know? And uh, after that, he said, "Man, hey," he said, "Is all ever gonna sound like this?" And I was like, "Pretty much." Like, <laughs> that's, like, you know, that's, like, that's the only way I know how to record it. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right. he's like, "Okay." He said, well, we good. Said, I'm better. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. He Straight said, we good. We he, can do was, this. We can do this. Yeah, he that said, we digital. can do this. And I remember he was getting ready to leave. That big stretch limo was, you know, I ain't going to say we lived in the hood, but it was very close right. to the hood. So I was already feeling funny about, you know, Straight this up. dude coming out in a stretch. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, probably was a couple little stick-up kids in my neighborhood. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this, bro. But he said, hey, he said I'm going to tell you one thing. He said, just remember this, man. He said, Motown was started in the house. Yeah, yeah. He said, so you good. Straight up. And he got in the car and left. That's all right. And that was good after that, man. We, you know, everything was okay, you know, and we knew we were at the forefront. And I actually did, um, Bone Crusher lived next to me, so the organ, a friend let me borrow, like an actual real B3 oh, yeah. organ for that song. And I remember it was so heavy, Bone Crusher had to help us move the organ mm. in the house. He was the only one strong enough to lift. Like, you know, we got like three, four dudes on one side. Right. Bone and Crusher on right. one side. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he helped us get it downstairs. And, you know, like I say, the rest is history. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what's happening. happening. So you like the direction that music is headed in right now? I mean, I'm cool with it, man, because the thing I love about it is it's so much independence. 
you know, um, when we it, started. It, 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 it's moving away from our the authenticity, the live authenticity. I mean, it's moving, moving away from, digital. it's moving away from that. It's moving more digital, but, you know, I'm old. So I remember when hip-hop first came in and people were saying, you know, this music ain't going to last because we ain't got live drummers. Right. right. And I was like, yeah, but it's still... It's still doing this thing. Like, thing. Like, it's still moving, right. you know. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, man. You know, that's like, but it ain't got real bass on it. I said, yeah, but it's still, it's got a bop it's still to moving. It. Yeah, it's I don't know, man. It. You know, so today, you know, even when I listen to, you know, my son is, you know, he and all of that. But when I hear it, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, but it's still got a little bop to it, man. Like, Straight I don't up. know. As yeah. long as it's still got that, as long as it's, you still talk about something that people care about. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you're an artist, people care about them. I mean, I run into people all the time that they think talent is everything. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you didn't have no talent, right? Right. Like if you didn't know nothing about music, if you didn't know nothing about nothing, mm -hmm. what would make you like something? Mm. What would make you like it? First thing you're going to do is what's the title? Right. Well, anybody, you know, if you work at Kroger, you know what the title is. You know whether or not it's a good title. You know whether or not you care about it. You know whether or not it's going to affect your life. You right. Know? So at the end of the day, that's that's Tupac. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. It's like whether you know he can rap or not. You know what he's saying is for right, real. Right. Straight up. You know what he's saying is a title you care about. Yeah. So that's music. Like yeah. if you ain't got that, pretty much you ain't got no music. So when music stops having that, it ain't gonna work. Right. But as long as it's got that, it's always gonna be something. And you gotta figure out what that is. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Back in the day, hey, we was talking about rims. Okay, well. Yeah, things definitely change. Like we, do, change. we were talking about in our last interviews, having uh, like everything moving towards this metaverse thing and yeah. stuff like that. And I be seeing Timberland on his IG. He's talking about he only making beats in the meta in the metaverse. I'm like, so so what? <laughs> you selling beats in the metaverse? Or <laughs> yeah. how, how Let me get out and put me on to that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is crazy with this metaverse. We don't get left stuff. left behind if we don't catch. You know what I mean? Catch I up because we can already be left behind. Because yeah. like I say, everything has a heyday. You know, I'm old, so I, I was a kid. I came up in the '70s, so right in the '70s, that was the heyday of music. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when I absolutely. say the heyday of music, I mean you got to understand. A lot of money is being spent now. So the heyday now, it's like if you talk to somebody that's around video games, mm -hmm. you talk to somebody that invented social media, mm -hmm. Facebook, you talk to somebody that invented Amazon, it's their heyday. Like this is their yeah, heyday. Yeah. So you got to right, right. know that you either going to be a part of that heyday or you're going to be a part of the thing that adapts after that heyday, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you just gotta figure out, like, am I gonna be the cell phone or am I gonna be the phone booth? <laughs> Straight there ain't no more phone booths out here. There ain't no more yeah, phone booths. So if, you, if you're in the phone booth business, you know what I mean? That thing yeah. gonna move, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta gonna... move, with, move with the times. And a lot of times when you're doing it, you don't understand that you the phone booth because everything is so good you can be blinded by that you're like man man we doing it man yeah man phone booths everywhere man right and somebody right. come in and say yeah but don't you don't think they'd rather make a call from the car like just, right straight up you know you don't think that's a good idea no man we make money off the phone booths <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> You know, I'll say you wake up and <laughs> car phone. You had yeah, you had a business. That's yeah. how all of it worked. You know, that's how everything worked. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cell phones, right? Oh, that, that, was you know, that was appropriate. That was appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they gonna get their money. Their cell phones, but iPhone come out with a new phone every year. Every year. Every year, bro. Right. Every now, year. I mean, I saw that in music. You know, my man came in and same thing. Like and the NPCs keep coming out. He NPCs had an idea, like, like hey. He had an idea he wanted to have MP3s. It's like, man, we can move music like that. But at the time, in music that I was in, 
it was all about CDs. Yeah. CD sales was the biggest thing in the world. So everybody sure making money. But you know, when a dude walks in and says, Hey man, you don't think people wouldn't like to just hit they right. hit this and button? Yeah. And they ain't gotta go to the store, they ain't gotta do all of that. I'm just telling you, if you're in this game, you better listen. Yeah, it don't matter how much money you got, it don't matter what you're doing. Somebody come in with a good idea, mm -hmm. somebody to come in with some talent, somebody come in with a good idea for a song, so listen, <laughs> I don't care you. if you're with the biggest people in the for world. Yeah, because my homeboy came to me with the idea about doing a podcast about three years ago. I ain't paying no Absolutely. attention. That's when we should have hopped on. That's when that we should have hopped on. Yeah. I mean, we all got stories like that. Yeah. That's what it is. Cause every time you miss it, you don't miss it. Yeah. Ain't nothing you can say. And then you, you, you get into it when it's saturated. You right. Know yeah. Now, now, now you fight. Now, now you fight. Yeah. Come up yeah. Exactly. When you was mm -hmm. against 10 dudes. Now it's a thousand. Mm -hmm. dudes. Exactly. Right. You're trying exactly. to find your way. And every time, man, you got to, you got to get in where you fit in. Straight up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to be real with yourself. Like, Hey, I didn't come in at the top. So yeah. Yeah. I know what it is. But like I said, all of that is, instinct mm -hmm. and some people got that some people don't mm -hmm. and so when you talking to even the biggest executive in the world yeah he can be the phone book you can be sitting there talking mm -hmm. to him and you can be mm -hmm. like oh yeah yeah bro I hear you you know but you can tell whether or not they in touch with what's coming right or if they trying to talk about their past and talk about all the stuff that they did right cause really the young dudes and where it's going, yeah. we don't care nothing about that. Straight don't nobody up. care right. nothing about what you got to say. Man, what have you done lately? What you did, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I don't go into no... I don't respect no OGs no more. Yeah, yeah, I ain't man, going in talking you. about, oh, man, you don't know, never scared, open up the door. They don't care nothing about that. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I don't care nothing about that, man. You, you know, they up. just want to know where you at. What you got What you doing right now. What you doing right now. What you got right now. Right, right. And you got to be real with yourself. Yeah. When you go in, and you still got some money. Man. Yeah, yeah. But you got to be the one going in, knowing that I know you don't care, and that's good. Yeah. Right? But this yeah. thing I got right now, this fire. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Whatever. I heard people. I heard a guy. He was telling me he was at some label when I was working with India. Yeah. And he was trying to tell me blase, blase this and blase, blase that. Yeah. I was thinking, you tell me what you want to tell me, but that little dark skin girl at the studio. Straight up. She's singing now. Brown she's singing. skin. She's singing like it now. <laughs> yeah, all that you talking, you whatever. You know I love your brown yeah. skin. Yeah, and I, I just, I'm looking at him like I just left the studio and she's singing that thing. I'm like, man. Right. Bro, you don't know. Like, yeah. when, once you hear it, got to readjust. Man. Yeah, well, man, when Bonecrow said, I ain't never scared. I'm the first person hearing this yeah. right. in the world. I'm sitting Did in you know world. it was something special? Man, he used to perform that I thing. Mean, take off his shirt. I told her, told her. Stomach. I ain't never I'm scared. I'm going to tell you this about Bone. Yeah. Bone is a good dude. Big voice. Just a good guy. Right. But Bone had a crew that he rode with all the time. Oh, yeah? So you have to know when you work with certain artists, it's like... Entourage. Yeah, I want your entourage in here. I just want you. Right, And right. the reason why you want that is so you can have an honest... Entourage can be a downfall. Yeah, because you want to have Absolutely honest, You want to be able to have an honest conversation instead of having somebody else's opinion mm -hmm. that ain't on the song mm -hmm. and ain't going to do something. So yeah. when we did that, Bone did a hook, and it, it was good. Mm. It was okay the first time, okay. the first hook, and I just looked at him and I said, "Man, I said I like it. You ain't got nothing else." Mm. Now if the entourage is there, no oh, man, you know, cause you got all yes people in the yeah. entourage gonna tell you, "Oh, we love it, we love it, everything is great," but because the entourage wasn't there, it's just me and him. Mm -hmm. He said, "Yeah, I might have something else." Mm. And so that's the next thing he went. You know, uh. he said, I ain't never scared. When he said that, wow. I just looked at him like, "Okay." Wow, like, uh, yeah, yeah, big man, yeah, you know exactly, what I mean? Because I felt exactly. like the track was big, yeah, yeah, it had weight to it, uh huh. And man, when he did that, because his voice was so big, I just wanted that, right? And so when he came out, you don't know, like, you don't really know, you, you more or less, you know, it affects you, right? 
Right. And I you know how the, you see it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. when I made, even when I made the beat, even though it took me 15 minutes, I just sat back. I was like, man, this thing made my head bob. Like, uh-huh. I like this. Like, uh-huh. I wonder if it's going to affect everybody else, else the like same that. way. Yeah. And so when he got through, all he did was the hook yeah. the first time. And uh, I played it for somebody, and they was like, "Yeah, oh, like, yeah, this this bone." I said, "Yeah," <laughs> you know what I mean. He yeah. came back, he did the verse, and then you know when Mike did the whole first album was hard. Though. Yeah, yeah, you know, but it, you just don't know, right? You just don't know. You're just trying to make it good to you, and then you're wondering if if it's gonna touch everybody else the same way. And then again, it's the title. Yeah. Like when we first did him, Never Scared, I didn't I thought well, it's cool. Yeah. It's all right. Like I like the music and all of that. Bone kept telling me, he said, Hey man, you need to you need to come out and see it, perform. Yeah. Because at the time it was a club called The Bounce. Okay. The Bounce mm-hmm. 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 The Bounce. Yeah, yeah. The so our whole goal, his Lee. whole goal was to get it yeah. into the bounce. Right. And have them play it one time. Okay. So, you know, I'm at well, the crib, man. I, I told a bounce up, man. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't even go with him, right? He right. go to the he go to the bounce. He called me back. He's like, Hey man, they played it. So really for me, yeah. That was the end. Like that was the whole goal for the record. Right. To have a record played at, at the bounce. The bounce. <laughs> so I was happy. I was like, Oh, okay, so we're good. We on to the next. <laughs> You know, we on to the next To the next record, record. Yeah. yeah. So then he called me back. He said, Hey, they played it again. <laughs> that guy played twice. In right. The bounce. Right. Said, Boy, we winning. Woo! Like, we winning. And then he hit me back. He said, Hey, man, they just played it again. Uh, oh, it's going off. It's going to take it off. <laughs> yeah, I said, What? Oh, man. And it bounce? just it got hot at the bounce. That's how you DJ. Need it right there. Yeah, it was DJ Coco Brother heard it. Okay. I think so. I Coco, Coco brother. brother. Yeah, yeah. Team, baby. I think he started playing it at night. But but the same type of thing. It was a uh, I think Bone one time he came into some place where he was working. He didn't have he didn't have no money to eat or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Bone gave him some food and he remembered it. Mm. I heard that story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he remembered what what he had done. Yeah. And he gave him love, but at the same time when he played it, mm-hmm. there was pressure on the rec- the radio station. It's like, hey, why don't y'all play this during the day? Because yeah. people is calling in like crazy for yeah. to hear this record. Mm-hmm. And so then when you get it to the daytime, you play it one, two times. Now it's pressure for the top eight at eight. Right. Now you're on the top eight at eight. Man. You, now you, you you're won. climbing up there and then all of a sudden you get to number one of that. Yeah. Now it's pressure because you got all these record labels and people that are trying to get their music out there. They got some little dudes in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, <they're> trying. <laughs> they ain't even Making trying. Noise. Yeah, that's beating us. Yeah, and we yeah. whining and dining radio people. We taking them to strip clubs, everybody right, else trying. Right. And so, you know, for us, I don't think we really even knew what we had. Yeah. We just didn't know. Like, we Mm. were just trying to make something good for us. Yeah. And that's all we knew. But I've learned over the years now, after that, I'm like, oh, okay, when you create pressure, boy, you... Yeah. You know, you know... Pressure plus pipes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Man, you already know. Yeah. You done did something, like, you can feel it. You can feel it when you walk into the meeting because the executives... That at attention. Yeah, they attention. They yeah. trying to, hey man, you yeah. know, yeah. okay, who's in there? Who am I gonna have to split money with? You know right. what's going on? Right. So that's what you want. That's what's happening. You definitely got that knowledge, man. What we de- what we normally do on this show is bring up up and coming artists and show talent that diamonds in the rough and people don't know about, but. We had to just bring you on the show to give you a rose today, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. You a legend out here in the game, man, and some I, people may not even know it, you know what I mean? I mean but yeah. you know what? I don't, do man. This. I don't do this for nobody. Uh, I've been asking a family, time. man. I, I must say, man, we definitely appreciate it, man. I, I, I just remember being a young kid, like 14, and um, just, uh, you know, looking up to you. Like, I, you were always in the back of my mind, like, 
he's a connect. He's somebody that I could deal with in the industry. And so from 14 to growing up, and, 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 and I think knowledge. I might have been around 18 when we got the chance to work together, it was it was an achievement, you know what I'm saying? So we we uh, we, we 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 love what you're doing and what you've done. Like Q Q talked about your influence on him, and I didn't even know that, you know, because Q he's one of my favorite producers. That's my producer right there, Q the Seventeenth. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I didn't even know you were one of the the major influences in in his career and and taught him what you taught him, but. You know, we, we want to give you your roses, man. And, um, man, it man nothing, it's, it's love. It's love, man. It ain't nothing, man. It's all family, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm still that guy. Like, if, Straight so up. if somebody come to me now, man, yeah. they ain't got nothing. It it don't matter. Like, you can still feel that connection. Like, you Absolutely. can feel like, hey, man, this is a person grinding. Because at the end of the day, everybody came up the same way. Straight they don't want to tell you it's a whole lot of social media. It's a whole lot of everybody... Most time when you see shows like this, everybody just trying to self promote. Right. You know what I mean? It's, right. It's like a time to talk about what I'm doing, what I got going. Right. And all right. That. Yeah. But yeah. It's not so much about that as it is making a connection with people. Right. So even the younger artists that I talk to today, I'm like, man, you got to understand. Most of the people that I've worked with, it's just a connection like you can feel that connection mm -hmm. you know india mm -hmm. came in i met india maybe a couple of years before she even started that first album mm -hmm. and we were just friends i was recording her uh i had a friend Kyrie simmons he had a band mm -hmm. that she worked in okay and uh, i remember recording her for him and hearing it and thinking wow you know, like this girl could really mm. sing. And we just mm. kind of stayed in touch. And when it came time to do the record mm -hmm. and she had a deal, Motown wanted her to do the record in New York. Right. You know, because they big time studio. They got connections up there. They already done paid. They got producers. They cool Straight with. up. Straight up. And so she goes up. She does the thing. She was like, you know, she went back to the label. She's like, you know, it's really cool. I like it, but I got a studio I want to work in. Mm. And it's in Atlanta. <laughs> it's a, this yeah. dude got a little duplex. <laughs> and you know, I mean, these are guys making millions of dollars. Like, yeah. And she was like, no, I'm going to tell you what it is. And so that type of loyalty, if you're looking for something, you need to find that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you ain't going to get paid unless that person that you hooked up with is fighting for you. Straight up. You know what I mean? Was like that song time. Ready for Love on Acoustic Soul? I think it was. It yeah. was, okay. Yeah, she did yeah. that. Uh, it's another guy, Blue. I think Blue produced that. Okay, okay. But yeah, yeah. you had to have, like, you got to find artists like that that, are, that will fight for you. Yeah. That when they get in there, just won't have people talking and doing stuff. Right, and, right. And moving them to anything. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people it's it's hard to get into the industry after somebody is already on. You're going up to people that basically this is their boy. This is you know this is me and Mark. We came up together. <laughs> right. So you trying to come in with us like you part of ran, the, yeah, yeah like the crew. Yeah, we like, like no nah, man, we done been together. Exactly. Like, we, exactly. We good. So I right. don't. You know, we good. <laughs> yeah, we good. Yeah, so, we good. I love it. Yeah, love you it. try to come in like that, that's not going to work. Yeah, so you have yeah. to feel that and understand that. Yeah. And even in the first meeting, you know pretty much that man, this person, you know, they down. They, they're a little bit more loyal. They're going to fight for me when we get stuff happening. Straight and up. That's, mm -hmm. that's the battle mm -hmm. is finding that. It's not yeah. so much finding all the other stuff mm -hmm. you, it's, it's a dime a dozen you yeah. can find pretty girls you can find fine you can find yep. Yep. you can find all of that but somebody that's gonna fight for you when they go in that meeting yeah and not be moved cause somebody got a nice car yeah or they bought them some new sneakers or, you know all of that yeah. Yeah. yeah bars you need to be looking for that straight up you're always dropping gems man hey, man you know 
Yeah, you know, man. Dropping so, how, how can the people uh, reach you uh, out there? If anybody that want to might w- might want to work with you, you know, or just you know, I reach mean, out. You know, my Instagram, Maestro Avery Seventeen. Maestro Avery Seventeen. That's what's cracking, man. How much you got? What you been working on lately? Man, you know, just helping my son. My son is blowing up as a producer too, man. He doing it. So, um, what, what, what's his IG? I, you know, I don't even know. Oh, man. We'll, I we'll see get, that. We'll get that more Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get Well, you know going to have him on the show. Let me, let me, let me uh, spell it out. Let me spell it out for him. Make sure that uh, I'm following right now, too. What What is it? M I S T R O M M A E S T R O Avery. A V E R Y 17. Let me go ahead and follow him, too, while I'm ready. Okay. M A E? Yep. S T R O. Avery. Maestro Avery Seventeen. Yep. Boom. Just like that. And you say, um, little Avery doing his thing. Oh man, he doing his thing for real, man. He. I would love to check out his uh, check out his sound, man. You just to, to just to hear. I, I remember he was young in the church, like just little dude, man. And yeah. Drum. yeah, yeah. So it, 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 I would love to just hear his sound and see what that's turned into. You know. I mean, we we working together now because it's my. You know, Avery, he's 20, 24, 24 now, and my youngest son is 21, but my youngest son, uh, Adam, uh-huh. he's been playing golf his whole life, and so he's mm. at oh, Kansas man, State, dope. and he works at a uh, one of the exclusive golf courts, so okay. he meets everybody, so... You know, we kind of have a nice thing at work, and you mm-hmm. know, I got another yeah, business partner. He do a lot of... Um, he started his own company, like just kind of recording skate videos. Oh yeah. You know, at first we just got looking at him like, man, what you doing? Next thing we know, he got close to a hundred thousand hey, followers. If people, that, if people that's into that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it's skating is big. Sure. Skating is huge. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. caught it at the right time. So I mean, everything is about catching people at the right time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and right now. They're that cell phone that gets the phone book. Straight up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and yeah. you just never know what it is. That's what y'all are. Like, people yeah. don't know that you need to go where stuff is good. Yeah. Not where it's all the hype. Just go where something is good. Straight if you see up. something is good, you see somebody doing something is good, then you need to check it out. Don't sleep. Yeah. Don't sleep. Stay when you woke. Wake up. Stay woke. woke. Yeah. yeah. When you wake up, you'll be like, oh, man. I missed it. You know? Yeah. I had yeah. Watch it again. I had a partner yeah. told me, he's like, yeah, man, I got this little white girl. I want you to work on it. He was in Nashville. He played me the record. And I was like, oh, man, I don't Still know. Up on man. It. Yeah, I said, man, I don't know, man. You know, a little girl had braces. and Yeah. It wasn't all of that. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I might have should have took that Taylor Swift. Oh, oh shit! Man. Man. Might have been a good. Wow. Man. You might have should. You might have. You might have should. Yeah. Might have been a good. Damn. Man. Yeah. That's how. They, that's the business. Be like that's that, man. Be like that's that. That's the game. Be like that. You yeah. win sometimes. They won't. Nope. Just being being open to to working, you know, with 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 people, man, and um, new talent, and um, you know. Give sure, stuff a chance yeah, sometimes. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Man. I mean, that's what it is. And sometimes when you first hear it, you just think, man, you're not sure because mm-hmm. you're not really hearing it clear. Yeah. I remember Bone had a good friend. He called me up, you know, it's like, yeah, man, I'm trying to do stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's cool, man. You know, I said, well, what's your name again? Titty Boy. Uh, <laughs> Stay woke. I'm like, <laughs> Niggas like, creeping. Cause you thinking, man, we ain't gonna make no money. Like, that ain't <laughs> titty boy. We can't even get, we can't even get played on the radio. Two like, chains. Uh, two chains. That's why you gotta stay woke because stay yeah, woke. yeah, yeah. E- even if it's even if it's good, maybe it's just a name change. Right. right. Maybe right. it's just something. So they, 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 that's all it was. Yeah. Somebody yeah. changed the name to two chains. He, he took, gone. He man, gone. He like you know what I mean. He and sometimes you just don't know until you really see it. Yeah, and sometimes guys start out so small that you're not sure what it's gonna be. Right. But you see that grind. I yeah. remember my buddies talking about, "Hey man, like, hey, has this dude Jeezy called you?" And I was like, "I said, yeah, I ain't even called him back though." 
said, man, that dude be grinding, don't he, man? Right. They said he be on his thing. Like, he be working. Mm, Jesus. And I was thinking, yeah, he do. You know, Toon was telling me, different guys were telling me, hey, man, somebody's looking for you. He took, he took that. over, yeah. too. They take off because yeah, Jay-Z I've right learned. In the city. He took over. I've yeah, learned over the right years the that that's what you look for. You look for the guys that's trying to make it yeah. go. And they got that drive. They got that push. Straight up. And you learn to respect that, man. Mm-hmm. I respect mm-hmm. that now, man. Those guys, I mean, they put in their time. Everybody yeah. that think it happens overnight, it don't happen overnight. Nah, because nah. I remember you used to tell me stories about that in the studio, about, you know, when you first met Outkast, you know, what they yeah. were doing compared to how they had taken off. And that, that was always encouraging and motivating, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't happen overnight, you know? Yeah. Keep going, you know? Yeah, that, that was definitely It motivating. don't, because you just never know what it is. And mm-hmm. if you got any kind of preconceived notion, you need to let that go. Yeah. And you all have them. I had them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I remember playing in the band uh-huh. with Goody Mob and we doing a little show and, you know, <laughs> CeeLo was saying, hey, man, I'm going to sing tonight. Right. We looking at him like, sing? <laughs> like, bro, like, can you sing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I hate it. He's like, yeah, I can sing, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think his dad was a pastor. So he's like, yeah, I didn't sing in church. I was like, you know, you just never know. Yeah, yeah. And then he sang a little something. He killed it. Killed it, huh? He killed it. Uh-huh. But I mean, killing it there since. See Ever since. Because you just don't know until you hear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just don't know what it is. Yeah. And you don't know what people are going to accept. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, you know, like you don't know what's going to be major and accepted but you can just see it around the people it's happening in your life Mm -hmm. already you just don't know what's happening right you know i remember being on cascade i was at the gas station and i ran into too short oh yeah so we had played some okay too short yeah i mean we did a couple of things and you know, he's like, yeah. You know, he didn't even remember my name. He just called me Bass Man. He said, right. yeah, what's up, Bass Man? You know what I mean? And I said, yeah, yeah, what's happening, man? He said, man, what you getting into? I said, man, we got a little gig tonight over at uh, Spelman. Yeah. Some sort of sorority. Uh, okay. You know I mean? So Short was like, I might fall through. Uh. I'm thinking, bro, like, what do you do? You over long at no, I can't see you at this gig. You know, I don't, I don't think that's going to. Man, all of a sudden I'm off on stage. Short walk up on the stage. Short dog. Wow. Short dog walk up on wow. the stage. He looked at them girls. They all looked kind of sedity and everything. I'm thinking, man, this ain't going. He said, "What's my favorite word?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, when he hit that thing, I'm talking about he killed it. I'm uh. talking about everybody. Man, them girls went crazy. Wow. And. And later on, like short. that's so dope. And later on, everybody is like, "Oh yeah, Too Short is worldwide." I'm like, "No, I knew Too Short was worldwide at that point." Yeah, like you just yeah. know it because it yeah. works no matter where you are. Exactly, like, you know, exactly. You can feel it. Yeah, you can feel that's it. That's what's you up, man. It. Yeah, man. And I appreciate you for coming out, man. I know you turned down the radio stations, oh, turned man, down man. all kind of interviews, but you family man. I'm glad you. Made the time for us, brother. Definitely family, oh, man. man. We make appreciate it, make you, it do brother. What it do, man. Yeah. Oh, A1. That's what I'm saying. A1 says day one. A1 man. says day one, man. We got A1 in the building, man. Yes, sir. So you already know it's the We Good Podcast. Go smash that subscribe button. Hit them yes, likes. Make, make sure you make them comments and, and uh, share it. Share the video. Uh, go follow us on all your social media platforms. What it is, Mo, at We Good Podcast. At We Good Podcast, man. It's your boy, MD Uno. Yes, it's Wise Guy. Mr. Free Game, coming with a bunch of free game. Always coming with that free game. Wise Guy Q. It's your boy, Wise Guy Q, the mouth for the South. And we got Avery Johnson, A1 Productions, the sound of the South. Straight up. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. We up out of here, Cool TV, DG behind the scenes. Shout out, baby. Let's get it. Some got something to say. Hey, some got something to say. We hustle, we grind on the way. Tomorrow ain't promised today. Know why we gon' shine in your face.